The top stories tonight in Y News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. vows on Independence Day that the country will not be subservient again to any external force. A group of UV Express owners and operators plans to appeal to the North Luzon Expressway management for toll discounts as a new toll hike is set on June 15. The provincial government of Albay prepares its residents as the danger zone around the Mayon volcano has been expanded to 7 kilometers. And Ukraine hails the first counteroffensive results, claims to recapture some villages while Russia denies gains. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, the 12th of June, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV news and rescue social media channels. I am Harleen Delgado. First in the news, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. led the celebration of the 125th Independence Day. In his speech, the president assured the Filipino people of his support to free the country from the corrosive political and social conditions that hold the nation captive. Nel Maribohok reports. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. vowed that the Philippines celebrating its 125th year of independence will never again be subservient to foreign powers as he encouraged Filipinos to find confidence from the past and continue to stand up to new oppressors and challenges. The heroes of our liberation would be proud to know that we have thrown off the ominous yoke of, dom of domination. Never again to be subservient to any external force that directs or determines our destiny. President Marcos said that poverty, inadequate economic opportunities, disabling rather than enabling living conditions and inequality are corrosive political and social conditions that hinder the nation's complete freedom and development. The administration, he said, has laid down the Philippine Development Plan for the next six years, noting it will be implemented with vigor and consistency. The government will be responsible, PBBM said, as he vowed to lead Filipinos on the long and uphill road to achieving freedom from hunger, neglect, and fear. He also challenged Filipinos to strive to remove the unfreedoms that stand in the way of human development. These are the corrosive political and social conditions that make the nation not as free as we would like to profess and to believe, such as poverty, inadequate economic opportunities, disabling rather than enabling living conditions, inequality, and apathy. The chief executive and the first family members led the Independence Day celebration on Quirino Grandstand. Before his speech in the parade, PBBM laid the wreath on the monument of national hero Dr. Jose P. Rizal. Nel Maribuho, UN TV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Migrant Workers, or DMW, plans to conduct a regular online overseas jobs fair beginning July to eradicate illegal recruitments victimizing Filipino workers. Janice Imhenta details why. To help ensure that Filipino workers who want to work abroad won't be victimized, the Department of Migrant Workers announced that it plans to conduct a regular online overseas jobs fair starting on July 7. DMW Secretary Susan Ople stated that they aim to implement the planned online jobs fair twice a week, especially on Fridays. Ito na rin yung pantapat namin doon sa illegal recruiters online. Maghihintay na lang, may pre-interview muna para titiyakin namin na yung talagang sasali doon sa online job fair namin ay totoong mga aplikante, hindi lang yung mga uh, nagpapanggap o kaya gusto lang kumuha ng datos o data or information, tapos illegal recruiter pala. 
Apart from preventing scams, Opley mentioned that this initiative will also provide Filipino job seekers with easy access to apply for jobs abroad. Once implemented, the DMW said that the online overseas jobs fair can be accessed through their official website. Ito po ay ma-access natin sa ating official uh, website ang www.dmw.gov.ph Magkakaroon po ng pre-registration at saka pre-submission ng mga uh, online documents ng ating mga applicants at sasalain po natin dito sa Department of Migrant Workers para nang sa ganon ay kami na rin po ang magmamatch at magre-refer sa mga kaupo lang recruitment agencies or manning agencies doon sa mga aplikante at, um, at nang mas mapadali po yung kanilang legal na paghahanap ng mga job opportunities. Janice Inhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Filipinos commemorate the 125th anniversary of the Philippine independence today. But what is the essence for some Filipinos about this event? Dante Amento has the story. June 12, 1898, the Philippines proclaimed its independence from Spain in Cavite, Cavite. From there on, the Filipinos commemorate annually its Independence Day. Some Filipinos nowadays believe that Independence Day is not only regaining our freedom from foreign countries, it is also a freedom from diverse situations such as financial freedom, fair and just treatment in the eyes of the law or government, among others. Pare pareho sana. Hindi lang mayayaman. Sana pati mahihirap. Para, para talagang maa-achieve natin yung kalayaan na sinasabi ang June 12 na yan. Araw ng ano, kasarinlan. Kasi yung kalayaan, malaya naman talaga tayong nakakakilos. Filipino historian Professor Xiao Chua explained that our independence can be proven by how we stand on our own feet from the influence of other countries or people. Pag sinabing kalayaan, ito yung parang malaya kang gawin yung uh, kagustuhan ng yung damdamin. Ano? So yan, kalayaan yan. Pero yung pagsasarili, Ano yan eh, uh, nagmula yan sa salitang sarili, tumatayo ka sa sarili mong paa. No? So, ibig sabihin, uh, hiwalay ka sa impluensya ng ibang tao na dumidikta sa'yo. She added, though there is still presence of American troops in the country and the West Philippine Sea dispute between the Philippines and China, we should acknowledge that we have our independence in order not to discredit our heroes who laid their lives to attain this freedom. Ayoko sabihin yun kasi pag, hindi, pag sinabi mo yun, parang hindi mo nire-recognize yung bunga ng mga sakripisyo ng mga bayani. Ang sabihin na lang natin, marami pang dapat gawin. Pero wag naman na parang walang kalayaan, walang kasarinlan. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad, Ukraine celebrates the initial results of the counter-offensive and asserts the recapture of several villages in the eastern Donetsk region, while Russia denies any territorial gains. Ruth Bahia tells us why, live. Good evening, Ruth. Good evening, Elsie. Ukrainian military forces have taken back three villages in the southeast from Russian troops. This marks the first time Ukraine has successfully regained control of any settlements since the beginning of the counter-offensive against Russian aggression. On Sunday, unverified footage was published on Telegram where Ukrainian flags can be seen at Blahodatne, Makarivka, and Sputchne. Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Maliar confirmed this and clarified that no positions were lost on the directions where Ukrainian forces were on a defensive. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky commended his troops and urged them to keep fighting but did not specify the locations where fighting was reported. 
LC, the Russian Defense Ministry, on the other hand, claimed that they are halting Ukrainian counter-offensive attacks while insisting that Blahodatne and two other villages are not clearly under the control of either side and are considered a gray area. It was also reported on Sunday that Ukraine and Russia has exchanged pr uh, prisoners of war with 94 Russian soldiers and 95 Ukrainians released. Back to you, LC. Thank you, Ruth Bahe, reporting live from Vietnam. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, Harleen. Thank you, LC. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. As the country commemorates today the 125th anniversary of the Philippine Independence Day, several progressive groups staged protests as they condemned the alleged control of superpower nations in the Philippines. This report will tell us why. Despite rains, the commemoration of the Philippine Independence Day pushed through where it was declared 125 years ago at the Aguinaldo Shrine in Kawit, Cavite. Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin graced the event, along with other local officials, including Cavite First District Representative Jolo Revilla. Various groups from different sectors also participated in the event. A job fair was also launched where 21 companies took part of the career expo. In San Juan City in Metro Manila, a wreath-laying service Bodhi was held at the Pelagbanan Shrine, led by Tourism Secretary Cristina Frasco and San Juan City Mayor Francis Zamora. Various job fairs are also conducted in the cities of Pasig and Marikina. Several groups, meanwhile, held protests in front of the Chinese consulate in Makati City to condemn what they call the intrusion of China and the United States in the Philippines. <laughs> In a series of tweets, the Kabataan Partilists trip to the U.S. Embassy located along Rojas Boulevard, but they were met with members of the police. Meanwhile, some ambassadors, including of China and the U.S., send their messages of support to the Philippines. Chinese Ambassador Huang Xilian says the Chinese Embassy joined the Filipino people in celebrating the Philippine Independence Anniversary. U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines Mary Kay Carlson and British Ambassador to the Philippines Laura Bothiz also expressed their greetings to Filipinos as they mark the historic event. To our Filipino friends, partners, and allies, Maligayang Aral ng Kalayaan. Our nations share a profound bond rooted in the values of freedom and democracy. The United States remains committed to our special friendship with the Philippines. Maligayang Aral ng Kalayaan, Pilipinas. I wanted to take this opportunity to recognize this very historic milestone. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the government of United Arab Emirates, or UAE, has donated over 50 tons of various food items and medicine intended for residents who are most affected by the heightening unrest of Mayon Volcano in Albay province. The said food and medicine donations arrived at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, or NAIA Terminal 2, early this morning. Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD Secretary Rex Cachalian, assured that the said humanitarian assistance will be given to the affected residents. Meanwhile, DSWD reports that a total of six trucks of family food packs from World Food Program were already in Albay. Residents within the danger zone are being prepared as the provincial government of Albay has expanded the danger zone around the Mayon volcano to seven kilometers. In relation to this, they are also preparing for a possible raising of the volcano's alert level to four. Alan Manansala will tell us why. 
provincial government of Albay has been preparing the residents within the 7-kilometer extended danger zone around the Mayon Volcano. This is in preparation for the possible increase to alert level 4 of Mount Mayon. Earlier, Albay Governor Attorney Greg Slagman said in his dialogue with the Department of Science and Technology or DOST Secretary Renato Solidum Jr. that when the parameter indicating the abnormality of the Mayon Volcano increases, the volcano's status will be raised to alert level 4. There's a possibility because of the lava crater na uh, that started to magkaroon ng konting ano, uh, spillage. Baka po increase natin within the day, I'm sorry, alert level 3 to alert level ng 4. Na kung saan, lalaki po yung radius natin, uh, na kung saan it's gonna be 6 to 7. Following this, the government immediately issued a notice those within the 7-kilometer extended danger zone should be ready to evacuate any day from now. The city and Barangay Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Councils in the affected areas have also been alerted. According to the governor, the local government is preparing aids for the residents to be evacuated. This includes livelihood trainings, national government programs, and other donations. Earlier, the Department of the Interior and Local Government Secretary Benhur Abalos arrived in the province. They immediately provide 50 tons of relief goods from the United Arab Emirates. In the bulletin issued by the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology or PBOX, the volcanic earthquake around Mayon increased to 21. Rockfall events also increased to 260 in the past 24 hours compared to 177 yesterday. Pyroclastic density currents have also occurred three times and lava flow has been observed in the volcano since last night. Alan Manansala, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Health assures that they are ready to respond to the medical needs of the residents affected by the threat of Mayon Volcano. According to the agency, they have already coordinated with different agencies for a systematic way of extending help. The DOH also reiterates the importance of following health protocols, especially wearing face masks to avoid getting infected by any infection and to protect oneself from inhaling ashfall. Apart from the evacuees, the department will also give attention to the health workers to prevent stress and burnout. Tandaan nyo, June 8 pa nanda dyan yan. So kaya uh, agad-agad din ako nagpa-deploy ng mga additional tao from the central office para makapahinga naman yung mga ibang uh, nagre-responde dito sa mga biktima. Meanwhile, the DOH will provide COVID-19 bivalent vaccines to the DOH Bicol to give added protection, especially to the high-risk group. Para naman sa mga hindi eligible, sigurado naman po natin tayo po ay mapapangturo kasi may mga, da, mga dadating pa at uh, yung mga may two boosters, yun ang pwede nang mabigyan ng uh, bivalent. Oil price hikes in the coming weeks are to be expected according to the Department of Energy. Meanwhile, the agency assures constant monitoring of gasoline stations and transparency to consumers. Bernadette Tinoy won't tell us why. The Department of Energy has announced an upcoming oil price hike starting tomorrow, June 13, based on the international oil market. Mararanasan po natin ang increase tomorrow morning. Wala po tayong control kasi po ang Pilipinas, tinatawag po tayong net importer ng petroleum product. Energy Assistant Director Rodera Romero stated that Saudi Arabia's government announcement of a production cost to 1 million barrels per day resulted in price increases for gasoline, diesel, and kerosene. Una yung production issue ng OPEC, yun nga, yun nangyari na yan, nagkaroon pa lang ng announcement. So nag-speculate na ang traders na, oh, magtutuloy-tuloy ito. Yung nangyayaring kaguluhan pa rin sa Russia, di po ba yung Russia-Ukraine geopolitical conflict? Alam naman po natin, 
may oil embargo sa Russia, binigyan sila ng mga price cap. The agency added that they adhere to transparency and consumers can check on the price list of oil products on their official website. Constant checking of gasoline stations is also implemented to ensure adherence to quantity and quality standards. Kinecheck po namin yung compliance nila sa standards on quantity. Dahil ibig sabihin, tamang sukat. Kung bumili ka ng 10 litro, dapat 10 litro ang ibibigay sa iyo. Meanwhile, the DOE said that they are ready to address complaints from customers through the hotline number 8840-2130. Bernadette Tinoy, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. A group of UV Express owners and operators plan to appeal to the North Luzon Expressway management for toll discounts as a new toll hike is set on June 15. JP Nunez will tell us why. On June 16, the National Group of UV Express will hold a conference with the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB and the Department of Transportation or DOTR. Among their topics will be their appeal for a discount on toll fees and other issues on the transport sector. The national president of UV Express National Alliance of the Philippines said the new toll hike on the North Luzon Expressway will be another burden for UV Express drivers and operators who serve the public. Among those affected will be UV Express routes from Metro Manila to Bulacan and Pampanga. Humingiya kami ng counting discount at tungkol sa mga yan. Kasi public service naman yung sa amin eh. Hindi naman talaga pang private na yung kapares ng mga private na dumadaan lang dyan. Tayo ay nagdadala ng ating mga pasahero, parito at paroon. Kaya sana naman bigyan kami ng counting discount kung magtasmag sila. The group stated that they will not ask for a fair hike as this would mean additional expenses for commuters. The Toll Regulatory Board or TRB has approved the toll hike petition of the NLEX Corporation which is set to be implemented starting June 15 this year. This toll hike is part of the last tranches from the 2012 and 2014 toll hike petitions and half of the 2018 and 2020 toll hike petitions. According to Julius Corpus, the spokesperson of TRB, the full amount of the toll hike petition might be approved next year after undergoing thorough evaluation. For the meantime, the approved toll hike is provisional to cushion the impact of inflation on motorists using the expressway. Only after complying with all the requirements and processes uh, in accordance with our rules, I Pinagbigyan na rin ang ating index na no, second, pwede kang maningil, pero kalahati lamang muna ipagpad mo itong taong ito. Based on the new toll matrix, there will be additional 7 pesos on the open system for Class 1 vehicle, an additional 17 pesos for Class 2 vehicles, and an additional 19 pesos for Class 3 vehicles. On the closed system, an additional 36 centavos per kilometer will be implemented. From Metro Manila to Mabalacat City, Pampanga, it will be an additional 33 pesos for Class 1 vehicles, an additional 81 pesos for Class 2 vehicles, and 98 pesos for Class 3 vehicles. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Prices of commodities may increase due to the oil price hike according to the Samahang Industria ng Agricultura or SINAG. The group's chairman, Rosendo Sol, stated that an additional 50 to 60 centavos may be added to the transportation cost for every 50 kilograms of goods. Meanwhile, Sinag does not believe that the increase in toll fees at NLEX will have a significant impact on the logistics of agricultural products. On the other hand, the Department of Agriculture also does not anticipate that both the oil and toll fee hikes will result in a major adjustment in the price of agricultural produce. Yung sa mga gulay naman, uh, ang mostly nakikita natin yung jeep na kinakarga doon. So, uh, yung total uh, number of kilo, hindi divide mo doon sa tracking na lumalabas. 
uh, doon sa tool fee no, na i-compute. So, hindi ganun kalaki talaga ang dapat increases doon sa consumer price. So, if we divide no, yung ating presyo ng gasolina doon sa metric tons na pinabiyahe, eh, very negligible po ang magiging increase sa presyo. Kaya inaasahan po natin na sana po hindi gumalaw ang presyo sa ating retail price. The Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or DAB-FAR, announces that they will provide equipment worth almost 5 million pesos to fisher folk groups in Pagasa Island this week. This initiative aims to strengthen the fishing capacity of fisheries in the West Philippine Sea. The two-day sailing of BRP Francisco Dagohoy started today from Puerto Princesa, Palawan to Pagasa Island. Among the distributed items, Items are fishing equipment such as fish stalls, fish containers, plastic floaters, twines, lead sinkers, and deep sea payao. Post harvest equipment including blast freezers, ice coolers, industrial weighing scales, crate storage, seawater flakes, ice machines, and generator sets are also included. DAB FAR personnel will conduct training on proper fishing handling, good manufacturing practices, and sanitation standards to assist the fishermen in Pagasa Island. Former Senator and Congressman Rodolfo Pong Biazon has passed away at the age of 88. This was announced by his son, Montenlupa Mayor Rufi Biazon. In his social media posts, the younger Biazon says his father died at around 8.30 in the morning today after his bout with pneumonia. He notes that the former lawmaker was diagnosed with lung cancer in July last year and underwent treatment. However, the older Biazon caught pneumonia twice this year, which had further weakened his lungs. Several senators also extended their condolences and poured tributes to the vet veteran lawmaker, describing him as true officer, a gentleman, and a dedicated public servant. Biazon served as senator in 1992 to 1995 and was elected again in 1998. He also won a seat as Muntinlupa congressman in the House of Representatives from 2010 to 2016. Before entering politics, Biazon served as the chief of staff of the country's armed forces in 1991. Ground battles and artillery fire resumed in Sudan after the 24-hour truce expired at 6 a.m. local time, which marked a brief lull to eight weeks of fighting between the Sudanese army and its rival Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, or RSF. Residents in the capital of Khartoum also reported airstrikes, which has killed seven civilians, while activists have reported a further deterioration due to ongoing communication outage in El Jinina, which lies close to Chad's border. Additionally, there have been increased looting and new waves of attacks by Arab nomadic tribes with connections to the RSF. According to the West Darfur Doctors Syndicate, these killings have resulted in the deaths of more than 1,000 people, equivalent to genocide. The ceasefire was brokered by the United States and Saudi Arabia to give way to humanitarian aid desperately needed by the more than 1.9 million people displaced by the conflict. The two countries had previously negotiated a 12-day ceasefire for both sides but has been repeatedly violated. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. The southwest monsoon will continue to affect most parts of Luzon. Based on the forecast of the State Weather Bureau Pagasa, there will be light to heavy rains experienced over the Ilocos region, Batanes and Babuyan Islands, Zambales and Bataan. Scattered rain showers will prevail over Metro Manila, the Cordillera Administrative Region, Calabarzon and the rest of Central Luzon. The rest of the country will also experience isolated rain showers and thunderstorms with partly cloudy to cloudy skies. 
The challenges that the P-pop group SB19 faced have inspired and contributed to the group's success as artists. Gladys Tuabi will, will tell us why. Before making a name in the Philippine music scene, the P-pop group SB19 faced challenges and frustrations as artists. According to the group, these experiences inspired them and contributed to their success. Their newest hit entitled Gento, which symbolizes gold, reflects their growth as a group after years of refining. Even though a lot of people might see that we're always successful, because we have a lot of trial and errors, we have a lot of frustration internally, and we've been doing a lot of things before. Maybe that's the most motivation we want to improve. Not just for us, but for us. Entire entertainment industry. We just to level up to the max. Para, ito na, sunod, ito na tayo. Same as Hollywood, same as J-pop, K-pop. We're wondering now, just to like create an ecosystem. Na talagang, uh, like artists like us and parang think different field. Then, talagang mag benefit or talagang mag-excel. So, yun po yung talagang motivation namin dito sa mga ginagawa natin. Yung frustration din namin as an artist yung naging motivation namin. Recently, the group released their extended play Pagdatag, consisting of six tracks including Gento. SB19 shared that this EP reflects their story and how the group feels. But this time sa Pagdatag, ito yung gusto namin ilabas eh. Pakinggan nyo. Ganun yung, ganun yung thinking namin. Ito yung nararamdaman namin. Ito yung story na SB19. Bakit namin kailangan ipahin or i-mold para mas magustuhan ng mga tao. Para syempre, um, hindi naman siya SB19 lang. Maraming tao ang tumulong sa amin. And maraming tao na gumagabay sa amin para mag-uutong uh, music na to. SB19's Pagdatag World Tour will kick off on June 24 and 25 at the Araneta Coliseum. Followed by shows in Davao City, Bacolod City, and even abroad. 18 fans, mark your calendars and witness the Pagdatag era of SB19. In addition to Black Star Entertainment, KDR Music House and Wish 1075 are involved in producing this highly anticipated event. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Our Kasang Bahai, as the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of Members Church of God International. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 13, it says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. And those are the reasons behind the news, June 12, 2023. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harleen Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.